The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So at the bottom, you would see when you're posting any message, you will see organizers only or organizers and panelists only. So make sure you've selected that. So that will be easier and we'll get your messages in real time. Uh, Dr. Fayaz, if you can start the recording, that would be great. And we will we'll begin, inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair, uh, Brother Zubair. How are you today? Okay, fantastic. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, Sunday afternoon or Sunday night for those in UK. So this is our week five at UK Islamic Mission. So we have been covering, uh, this is our fifth webinar and this is part three for new Muslim mentoring. So let's begin. Uh, before we go any further, uh, just a reminder for those of you who may have seen this earlier, we talked about this notion of luxury cars and how at different points in your life we value different things. So there may be a point in our life when we did not value those cars and if someone were to offer us you know, a bunch of keys, which we would, might think, okay, very simple looking keys and not very elegant, versus a bunch of colorful balloons, we would probably pick the balloons basically. And the reason is that sometimes we don't have the foresight to see what's valuable and in the long run and what's not. Likewise, it can happen in terms of stocks and investment in business. Sometimes we may not value something, but over the next few years, we might realize that, look, this thing has really grown and matured, and I wish I had invested in that. So why am I mentioning this is because every day we have a choice of how we invest our time, what kind of resources uh, and what kind of activities we focus on and where we invest our time. So the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that, look, if Allah were to guide one person by your efforts through you, it's better than you having a whole lot of red camels. And red camels is a very precious uh, thing to own, just like how you would imagine luxury cars dealership in today's world. So a brief introduction about myself in terms of my involvement. I have been involved in a lot of different Dawa teams, uh, coaching, strategy, relationships, uh, spiritual coaching, and uh, other things like that. For my day job, I focus on cybersecurity uh, as my trade. And uh, now is a reminder for four types of gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us when we are focused and we are seeking the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're seeking the ilm of the, uh, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, this is a gathering which is not the traditional gathering where you're you know, gathering in a masjid environment and you're physically together, but this is from the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for us. So let us put our full focus and concentration in this and let us turn away any other multitasking that we may be doing during the live webinar or while we are watching the recording so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the value for us and increases the rewards, the wisdom, the facilitation, tawfiq, and the rewards for us all be the light ta'ala. Okay, so in terms of a review of what we have covered so far, so in part one of the webinar, which is available via Facebook and YouTube, uh, we covered about having our focus and objective clear when we are spending time in da'wah, what are the different risks a da'i is exposed to, and different types of success that we can experience as a DAO, uh, as a as someone in the DAO team. We talked about the notion of a customer success team, a converse success team versus a converse support team, and what are the differences and why we need success teams to be in place, and how different businesses are using these success teams to make their customers, uh, to make the people who they are serving successful. And then we talked about why should we bother about, you know, post shahada? Why should we not focus on, you know, giving da'wah to non-Muslims and, you know, arguing with them and, you know, intellectually uh, putting forward our arguments and putting forward why Islam makes sense and leaving it at that when they take the shahada. Why do we need to continue? What is the importance of that? And what is the importance of that that we see from Quran, Sunnah and the seerah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We then talked about the 80-20 rules, you know, what are some of the things that you can do to be have running an efficient team in your masjid, in your organization, in your MSAs or ISOCs, in your DAWA team. Uh, we talked about a suggested structure of a reverse success team. 
We talked about uh, the stages that you must may go through, and we uh, helped you and supported and empowered you by different resources that you can use as you continue this journey. After that, uh, we talked about the notion of coaching. What is a coach? What is convert coaching about? How do you find new Muslims to coach or renewed Muslims to coach? Uh, what should you be discussing? Uh, what should you consider discussing in your first meeting in the initiation of that relationship? How should your regular follow-ups be structured? Uh, and we talked about structured studies. We talked about the halal and haram bombardment and how do you deal with halal and haram when it comes to converts? We talked about some common pitfalls and other tips. The now today is part three, where we'll be doing some introduction about a holistic approach to converts and reverse, and this can apply to other people in the community as well. We'll talk about a quick tactical way of coaching and the three pillars of tactical coaching. Then we'll talk about more strategic coaching and intervention and the five components, five pillars that you wanna use for that. And then we'll give you a roadmap a model in which you can take someone, and it could be yourself, it could be someone that you're developing, and how they can basically unlock themselves, they can find breakthroughs in their life, and they can holistically grow in different areas of their life. And then uh, we'll touch base on some of the most common obstacles that people encounter when they're embarking on this journey of personal growth and development. So this is not something that you will you know, attend a webinar uh, for a day or a, a, an hour and a half, and then you'll master it. For, like any other trade, like any other knowledge, you need to take the knowledge, understand it, and then use it for you to be able to internalize and master it. So if you really want to benefit from this thing, you have to have that intention and a solid action plan to following up with all the knowledge we have been giving you in these five webinar series, and then get out there, protect yourself, and do the work of da'wah and development for converts, and we will support you from our side, we'll support you with, uh, with, in terms of case studies, in terms of follow-up support via email, WhatsApp calls, whatever you need. So inshallah, we'll follow up with our commitment side of thing. But the point is, will you be taking action with the knowledge that we are sharing? So we talked about all this stuff that, you know, some of the amazing possibilities that can come out of uh, convert coaching. Uh, we shared some stories with you. And uh, for further stories, you can take, check out this link and then see some of the impact this work can have on the development life cycle of a convert. Okay, now we want to think about our whole work of dawah, okay, especially after, uh, after the shahada. So you can think of it in, from three different angles. The first is your first meeting, your first initiation, you're welcoming them, your first meeting with them, and that you're talking about the worldview, you're doing an introduction, personal introduction, as well as the introduction for what you have to offer the converts. Then on an ongoing basis, you are mainly focused on one key thing, and that is their spiritual development. How do they uh, comfortably and continuously and consistently grow in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's your main objective. Now, the third objective, this is what we are dealing in today's webinar, is that as an individual, they may have other issues in their life apart from their spiritual issues. So obviously fixing our spiritual issues, fixing our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a ripple effect on all parts of our lives. But we want to take it from an angle of like, okay, what can you do? What tools can you use to help someone who is going through different issues in different areas of their life? So those are the three things. Now in terms of your understanding of the converts, you need to understand two things. One, is there are people who would take the shahada and they don't come back. They go back and they deal with the issues on their own and they're not really focused on their spiritual development, okay? And that's the thing where you have to be proactive, you have to reach out, you have to remind them, you have to inspire them. Even if they're not very keen on responding back, you have to figure out a way to maybe reach out to them once a week. And then if it becomes too much, then you know, uh, twice a month or once a month or once a quarter. Well, you, that's something that you have to decide, and we talked about this in part two. Now, there are other types of people who would have that sort of relationship with you. They will come back to you. They will share their issues with you, and so on and so forth. And that's a lot of uh, what we will be talking about today will be applicable. So we talked about this in our earlier webinars, that some of the issues that people may be going through as new Muslims. Now, this is not to say that these issues exist because they are new Muslims. They would have been facing these issues even if they are uh, not new Muslim. 
Okay, that's very important to remember that this is not necessarily because of their choosing of Islam. All these could also have been there even if they were not, uh, uh, even if they were not uh, to become Muslim. So that's something else to remember. But that does not mean that we leave these issues aside and we do not empower our new brothers and sisters to solve these issues. Okay, so when we are talking about this empowerment, this coaching model, uh, there's two ways of thinking about it. It's a tactical way and it's a strategic way. Tactical is something that you will usually use as a response. If they come back with you, they come back to you and they're like, hey, I'm finding this issue, there's something going on, you know, I have this issue that I'm facing, what can I do? And a strategic is you're proactively thinking, okay, look, this is the holistic picture of your life. You know, let's have an understanding of where you stand in different areas of your life and what you can do to excel in different areas of your life. So let's take a look at the tactical coaching first. So in that, you have to remember that there are three main components. There are three main components that you need to demonstrate when someone comes to you with an issue. The first component is active listening. So you're listening to understand how they're feeling. You're listening to understand what they are going through. You're listening to understand what their fears are. You're listening to understand what their mindset is. You're not just listening so that you can respond. And this is something very important in all the different areas of our relationships, especially between spouses as well. Listen. And you know, whenever, even within team members, when you're running a, a team of DAWA or a nonprofit team, when, when there's a talking happening, understand what the other person is saying, listen to them. And then second thing is, once you have listened, you need to show that you have listened. You need to show that you understand them. You need to show that, that you understand the problem that they're facing and you're not brushing it off. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. No. So you are actually showing that you have empathy for them. And this is the second component of it. And then the third component is, okay, what are we going to do about it? So you are empowering them. We'll talk about how you empower them, but now that's the stage where you are focused on discussing how to solve the problem or how to best deal with the problem. You're not dealing it for them. You are empowering them so they can deal with it. And you're not forcing them to make a decision they are the one who will be making that decision. Okay, so this is something we talked about in part two. As a coach, this is what your role is. Okay, you are inspiring them, you're helping them set goals, you're discussing ideas, you're discussing obstacles, you're discussing how to overcome obstacles, and so on and so forth. So remember the three components we had, active listening, empathy, and then empowerment. So now we're talking about the empowerment. What are some of the things and tools that you can use to empower them to solve a problem. All right, so number one is you discuss options. Where would the options come from? So you have a situation at hand and we'll take a look at a few situations, but where would the options come from? So the options can come from them, actually. So don't think that they don't have any ideas. Ask them, okay, I understand the issue and I understand the complexity of it and I understand how you're feeling about it. Okay, now what are some of the things that you can do? So this is something that has been thrown to you, my brother, my sister. What can you do to make it better? What is it in your hand? How can you make it better? Let them come up with options. Then you may be able to come up with some options based on your studies, based on your um, experience and so on and so forth. And then the third way that you come up with options is by consulting other experts in that area. It could be other people who have gone through similar situations or other coaches or your you know, wider network of coaches and so on and so forth. So that's how you're gonna gather a bunch of options. And then you want to discuss the pros and cons of those options with the convert, with the person that you are coaching, okay? And obviously you want to employ the principle of selecting something that will minimize evil and, and, and something that will make it a greater good. And then who decides? They have to decide. They don't have to decide on the spot. They can decide on the spot and then have a discussion on a strategy, what they will do about it, and they can follow up with you, or they can go home and think about it, and then they can decide what do they want to do about that situation. So let's take a look at a few case studies. And there are a few ways of doing it. One way is, we will discuss the case study and, and you guys can put in your uh, comments and share how you would do with, uh, deal with that situation and how you would uh, basically uh, use the three building blocks we talked about, active listening, empathy, and uh, empowerment. Or what we can do is depending on your uh, participation level, 
uh, we may be able to we will just continue the content of the webinar and then we'll come back to it at the end of the webinar and maybe discuss how uh, you would uh, solve that so let me just try and then see if, if you guys are participating and then we'll take it from there so this is case study one what would you suggest in this situation what would you say if dan comes to you what would you say to him or her let's see if we get some participation Okay, so I guess I will just touch base on some of the things and then we'll move on and then if at the end we have time, we can discuss that inshallah. So obviously, first you have to understand that how the person is feeling, right? So I would probably ask, okay, why does he need to tell his parents? What happens if he does tell them? What happens if he did, does not tell them, right? What are some of the things that he or she is afraid of? And then I would uh, list out some options. Okay, so that's something that obviously we have resources on. So I say, okay, you know what? Uh, maybe you can do this. Maybe you can just have a frank conversation with them. That's an option. Maybe you can hide. That's another option. Uh, maybe you find someone who is more um, close to you, who is closer to you, maybe your mother or father, and then you start with them or a family member and you start with them. How would you say it, right? And then maybe, you know, I would also reach out to my, you know, uh, bigger coach network, like for example, the WhatsApp groups that we have and say, okay, how have you guys dealt with situation in the past and today if someone comes and asks me i have video recorded on that and then i say look these are a few things to consider and so on and so forth so with that you would compile a list of different options nice get information about he uh, okay nice let's get a uh, good feedback on the chat there ask him what would happen if family knew nice very nice good and then you would uh, list out pros and cons and then you would say okay then you make the decision Please make sure that you do not make the decision for them because if you say, okay, you know what, I think you should go and tell them. And then if he does that and he is kicked out of the home, you know, may Allah protect us all, then it's gonna come back at you. Now, do you, are you ready to support him? Are you ready to take him in, right? What if you are ready to take him in and then he gives the same information to some other convert? Are you ready to support the converts in that scenario? So it's very important to realize that what we are capable of doing and what we are not. So that's what a decision should be theirs and we should be there to empower and support them. Now, another thing that can happen is, uh, you know, things are different. So for example, even if you are able to take him or her in and you're able to provide them an accommodation, what if the person really, really, really misses their family? And they're like, oh, I, I wish I'd never told them. You know, so that's something else to understand that how the person is strong within himself or herself. Because sometimes they're not strong enough and they're like, you know, my family is everything for me. And if they start doubting me, if they start disrespecting me, then there's nothing left for me in this world. And then they end up quitting and giving up on the religion. So that's one of the things to consider all the different angles uh, of a situation. Okay, now here's another example, right? Somebody can be feeling, you know, really emotionally upset that why are my parents not being guided? How would you take this situation and you know use the the principles that we have talked about so what i think i will do is uh, i will continue moving on and then hopefully at the end we have time and we can come and discuss these cases or another good thing would be that you can discuss that with another coach another partner and both of you can discuss that perhaps at the end of the webinar as well so that's another third case study so these are three case studies that we definitely want to go through inshallah and employ the principles that we have talked about Okay, so now this, these were, as you can see, these were responses. These were us responding to their challenges that they are facing. Now we want to go into something more strategic uh, in terms of a holistic development of the people that we are mentoring and coaching. So up until now, if you have any questions about the first two sections of this webinar, I think this would be a good time to take those questions before we move forward. So let me pause here for a few seconds and then see if there are any questions, inshallah. As a friendly reminder, when you're typing in the chat box and under that chat box, you would see two. Um, so please use uh, organizers and panelists. So I would see your questions right away and then Dr. Fayaz does not have to copy paste those in. So that can save us some time, inshallah.
So any questions about what we have talked so far? All right. Okay, so let's move on into the strategic component of coaching. So we have five principles here. We have five moves, five principles, or five pillars, uh, however you would like to call them. So number one, when they are talking about something, and this could also be in, in, uh, this could also be employed when they are coming in for a tactical solution, when they're coming in for a situation that's at hand. So if you can improve their emotional state, if you can improve how they are feeling at that time, it would help them come up with more uh, powerful ideas. It would help them come up with interesting ideas that they would not be able to come up with if they're emotionally really, really down. So that's something very important to keep in mind. That and sometimes it may be like you know you may just use for example the notion of active listening and empathy, and based on this situation you may not be able to empower them, and you may have to say okay let's do, go and do this activity, and then we can discuss some of the options on how to deal with uh, this situation. So the empowerment stage may not just come right on the spot. You'll have to judge are they in an emotionally well state to discuss empowerment ideas, or you need to postpone that to a better time. So this is something very important. Like, look, the way we are feeling has a, has an impact on the actions that we will take, has an impact on our ideas, and so on and so forth. It's vice versa as well. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. Now, what can you do to help them feel better? What can you do to help them uh, come at a better emotional state? So obviously, one idea is to help them realize that, look, this is all temporary. This is all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is still in charge, and he is the best decision makers. So, you know, don't don't overburden yourself. You know, and remember that Allah is in charge and he has a plan and we only have to think about what are we doing in this situation? Am I doing my best in this situation, right? We don't have to overburden ourselves, right? Sometimes we overburden ourselves that, look, if I don't act properly, the world is gonna shatter. It's not the case, right? Because Allah is in charge. And the question is, how are we acting in a situation that we are uh, put into? Another way of emotionally empowering them is to discuss or bring up if you are already aware that, look, in the past, you have already dealt with this situation, right? So for example, I had a person, he was always afraid of, uh, you know, becoming homeless. I'm like, okay, look, you know, you have had tough times in the past, but you have, able, you have been able to, you know, manage it well, and you've been able to pay your rent and so on and so forth. You've never been homeless, homeless anyways, right? So now if you're always afraid of it, you're going through the experience of being homeless, even without being homeless. So Allah has protected you all across the years and you've been able to manage it. Now, if you keep thinking about it every day, then it, it's like you're going through that experience, you're going through that hardship, even if in reality, you're not becoming homeless. So you can use past success on how they have managed to do uh, great things in the past. And then you discuss with them future possibilities. So for example, in the case when the person was you know, concerned about their parents, or someone's parents may have died you know, without Islam. So you, you need to paint a beautiful picture for them that look, yes, that was you know, a mishap, that's something that we would not you know, appreciate, and that's something that's really painful, and a prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, also had to go through this pain. But now imagine what can happen after. What can happen in the future? Maybe Allah will bless you with a family. Maybe Allah will bless you with children that would basically carry the flag of Islam. That would be the du'as. That would be like the businessmen. That would be like the um, uh, the doctors. That would be the people who would do great things for this world while being Muslim. So imagine that you living in paradise with this whole big family of yours, right? So you're painting a, a better uh, future that is exciting for them. So you're taking them away from what has already happened and what is possible for uh, it to happen to them. Another interesting and easy idea is to help them change their physical state. Go on a walk, go on a run, go in the nature, go for swimming, whatever. Do something that will, or, or play a sport that will help them, you know, uh, physically change their body and that will have mental impact as well. Or go do something fun. Right. So it could be just playing a sport uh, or watching a documentary, watching something that's, you know, a bit fun or just hanging out with people, going on a dinner, going on for coffee in a nice cafe or a nice environment, going on the lake, in the garden, in the park, so on and so forth. Another way of doing that is to find someone in the community and help them together. So you go and, for example, serve food in the food bank or serve soup 
or you know uh, buy some accessories and go and give it to someone who is homeless you know so on and so forth so that would also make help you elevate the emotional state of the person as well and likewise if you visit someone in a tougher condition right at hospital on the street uh, somewhere or watch or document you someone who is in a much tougher uh, condition that can also help elevate the emotional state and uh, make someone grateful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. So here are some resources for that. So there's uh, seven uh, practical steps to feel amazing right away. Uh, short videos on these things and mindset empowerment videos uh, could be other things that you can use uh, to help them change the state. Now remember, if you're talking about the five pillars, we've just touched upon the first pillar, which is the emotional state. Now, as we are talking about strategy, right? So you, as you realize that you're working with someone and they have this issue that they get negative, you know, most of the time, every day or every other day, they are focusing on things that are, you know, uh, disempowering. They are thinking, oh, what if this happens to me? You know, I'm not happy. I don't have this. You know, I'm struggling. So on and so forth. So some of the habits that you can use, and Hamza has worked great for me. Um, dealing with a lot of different people is to encourage them to take notes right so every few hours or once a day or twice a day they need to think back and and look at really something that's going well in their life okay and it should not be something very superficial but something they need to feel from their heart what is going well in my life so it could be like wow man i have a child you know how many like uh, how many people don't have their children right they have died for one reason or the other or they're hospitalized Whatever. What is it that you're really, really, uh, you know, happy for? You know, I have clean water to drink. Is this something I can take for granted? I have the ability to drive my own car. I'm not dependent on other people driving me or putting me on a stretcher. Whatever, right? So help them write down one unique thing every day, or twice a day, or thrice a day. It can also be used for when I do relationship coaching. Like, okay, or every day, write down one thing that you are grateful for from your spouse. What did he or she do today? That was a great thing. That was a really huge help for you. That meant a lot to you. Okay. Uh, another thing that I found very useful is that, you know, some of these empowerment quotes or, you know, for example, hadith of the day or words of the day, such as in Muslim Pro, you see that every day now, right? Or whatever they find empowering or whatever they find a good reminder to them, they can put that in on their phone and then they can set a reminder. Okay, show me this words, you know, every day at this time or this another quote every day at this time so they can use these type of things and you can help them so that they can come out of this negative mindset and, and most of the time in their day they will be having um, a productive uh, empowered a strong mindset and they will be emotionally better right likewise you might want to incorporate some of these things daily right so for example uh, uh, physical exercises changing your physical state so maybe incorporate uh, act exercise activity daily in their lives or you know, uh, once a week to go and help someone who is in a difficult situation and so on and so forth. Uh, from a future possibilities perspective, maybe they should write down their vision of the future and maybe they should read it every day. Why not? So all these things are really, really, really powerful and that can help people in be in peak emotional state most of the time, most of the time. Okay, now the next thing is, so that's the second pillar, is what are we focusing on? What are we focusing on? And that's also very important. So are we focused on the problem or are we thinking about the solutions? Are we thinking about what are we going to do to solve the problem or to make it make it easier or to make it make our situation better? So some of the examples that you would see that people lose focus on is sometimes they're focusing a lot on creation. Oh, why does this person not love me? What if he or she does not support me? You know, I will not be able to accomplish my vision. I will not be able to grow. They not focus on creator who is most just. And we'll talk about this example uh, later when we talk about validation. But look, you can seek your validation. You can seek your support. You can seek to be beloved by the creator. And that's easier because he is just. He knows everything. Creation, on the other hand, they have their own blind spots. They have their own issues. They're not just all the time. They have their emotional issues, which may have an impact on how they speak to you. So the, if somebody is talking to us or if somebody is you know, dealing with us, it's not 100% dependent on what we are doing to them, 
but it's also dependent on their own internal issues, their own emotional state. So why are we seeking and running after the pleasure and love and likeness and, and you know, popularity with creation who are deficient within themselves as opposed to focusing on the creator? And then sometimes the second thing is like we, we look at it, oh, look, look at my condition, right? And based on that, based on what doctors say, based on my bank balance, based on this and that, I don't see that I can ever have a future that I want to have. But what you're forgetting is that divine intervention. Allah can do anything that he likes. So why are we losing hope in the mercy of Allah, in the beautiful future that Allah can create for us? Uh, third element is sometimes people start focusing on things that are not in their control. And they don't focus on things that are in, your con in their control. So what is in their control is what uh, efforts they are going to make. What is it that they will do from themselves? They're focusing on what people are doing to them, what environment is doing to them, and they're not focused on things that are in control with them. And same thing, you're focused not on yourself, but you're focused on people, on changing people, which is hard. Changing yourself is easy. Focusing on what efforts you will do is easier than focusing on results. Because sometimes, let's say, if you want to give da'wah to a person, if you already focus on, okay, my success, my happiness is if this person becomes Muslim, if this person starts practicing five times, praying five times a day. Now, if that's how you measure your success, it will be harder. But if you measure your success, look, that I need to make dua for that person. I need to take care of my prayers and I need to find ways to have a discussion with that person once a week, once a month, twice a month, whatever. And as long as I'm doing that, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. So if someone measures their success like that, that will that person will be much, much happier than someone who does not. And likewise, someone is like looking at the fear versus the future possibility, the future vision that they have created and getting closer and closer to that. So again, in terms of improving your focus, in, in terms of having an empowered focus, you can use some of the same techniques uh, that we uh, discussed in pillar number one, which was being in a peak emotional state. So now the third thing, the third thing that we want to focus on is what would we do? What would we do when something happens to us that we do not like? What meaning will it we give to it? And what kind of move will we make to deal with it? So if something happens to you, do you think it's an absolute good thing or an absolute bad thing? Is this the beginning of a new challenge, a new phase of your life? Or is this an end? Is this an opportunity for you to grow? Or will you make it an opportunity for you to be knocked out? So let's take some examples. Someone loses a job. Is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Maybe Allah has made it happen so you can get some sins expiated. Or you can you know, develop a new skill. Or you can find the next job that is better for you. Or you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone gets divorced, does that mean that is the end? to them being a great father or a great mother, a great husband or a great uh, wife, or no, that marriage was good for them up to a certain extent and Allah will now take them in to a new relationship where they will learn from previous experience and they will have a much better experience going forward. Why are we making it an end? Why are we not calling it a new beginning? Is it an opportunity for growth? Now I will learn new things. I will learn how to overcome challenges, how to overcome sadness, or will I take it like, okay, that's it, my life is going downhill, uh, from this point forward. Now, the fourth element is friends and circle, right? So this could be looked at in two ways, right? How is my relationship with people that I care about? Are they happy with me? Am I happy with them? What needs to be done there? Are there people in my relationships that I am, you know, giving a lot of importance to and they don't deserve that much importance? So on and so forth. So that's another component of being happy and growing. So, First, uh, first thing is what we talked about earlier as well, and that is the validation factor. So what may happen is that sometimes people may see that, look, you know, this person does not respect me, or he or she is always putting me down, or he or she is always doubting me. So remember what we talked about earlier when we were talking about creator versus creation. So the creation has their own shortcomings. They have their own shortcomings. They have their own internal issues. So if they keep saying something to you and you believe them and you start seeing yourself as someone who is not capable, whose fault is that? That's a faulty mirror that you are viewing. 
this mirror is twisted. It's a funny mirror like you would see in some sort of an exhibition or some sort of a you know, fun fair. It's a funny mirror. It's not a true mirror. So you need to be able to view yourself in your own eyesight, in your own way, because you know yourself better. And you need to view yourself in, in terms of what Quran says about qualities that you need to develop to be successful. For example, Quran says that you need to uh, use patience, as sabr and salah for you to be massively successful. So why would you not use that? Why don't you ask the question, that how does Allah view me? How does Allah view my efforts? Instead of worrying about how does uh, people view you? And that's something that really, really puts people down, converts and non-converts as well. Another way could be that, look, you know, people may have disagreements just because of their culture, just because of their perspective. So it's not always worth trying to change the perspective of everyone. So you may have to agree to disagree at some times. You may have to choose to get into a debate. But then the question becomes, how often do you want to debate? So in a, in a sense of, for example, when we were talking about, you know, new Muslim telling their parents about Islam, you know, one of the things uh, that I recommend is that it should not be a discussion of all the time because it will really make it hard. So um, in, in, in that scenario, I would recommend that, look, you set up some time once a week or once a month or whatever, and you discuss these issues and you listen to each other and you discuss. And the rest of the time, you're not discussing that. And that could also be used uh, for a couple who is having uh, arguments on important topics. And instead of doing this argument every day, 24 seven, and having a miserable life, you, you uh, log out some time and you only discuss those options at a specific uh, time. And obviously, from a different angle, maybe some of the things you don't need to uh, argue about. It's okay for you to have each have your own opinion about it. or for you to give up on some of the things. And this is something from our deen, as Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us, uh, the reward for the person who does not argue, even if he's right. Okay, and obviously that's in certain situations, it's not when, when there's a matter of haq and batil, right? When there's a matter of truth and falsehood, right? So it depends on situation to situation, but it's important to remember that you don't have to argue all the time. You can argue at specific times, you can let go of some topics and so on and so forth, depending on the impact and the seriousness of that topic. Let me take a quick sip of water. Good. So let's move on. Now, the fifth element is that you need to now think about something very important, that your small, consistent habits that you may not pay attention to, like what's the big deal about this? right can become massive actions and can have magnificent impact on what you want to do in your life okay so that's something very important look sometimes the solutions are small you know we magnify the problem and then we're looking for a big big solution we're looking for okay so for example some of the problems you may think okay it will take me years to solve this problem but that may not be true that may not be true Things can happen instantaneously. So you have to figure out those small things that you can do that can have a huge impact in your, um, in your problem. For example, you know, someone may be being hurt you know, in their feet. And that could be just because of a small grain of sand or a small stone or a small pebble you know, embedded or you know, plucked in into your sandals. So if we just remove that, your problem is gone. So not, so the, so if you look at the problem, it was massive pain. It was really, really bad pain, but the problem was just a small grain that needed to be thrown away. And another thing to remember that like once you start, you know, getting better in one area of your life, it will have a ripple effect and it will help you get better in other areas of your life. So if certain things are easy for you, do them, and that will build that momentum for you, that will build that momentum for you to have a massive impact on other areas of your life as well. Okay, so how do you do that? So first of all, you need to understand the power of habits and you need to have holistic habits. So remember, you're gonna have a holistic view, right? So for someone to be in a peak emotional state, they should can consider having some sort of physical activity every day or every other day. It could be something you know, intensive, like a workout, running, uh, an intensive sport, or it could be something really simple, going in a walk, right? Walking on treadmill or going in a walk in the park. So you are, you're combining the activity with the benefit of being in the nature. 
Then you want to have some sort of an activity where you are reading. So instead of you, you know, flipping around social media and, you know, looking at the lives of people and so on and so forth, why don't you pick a book that you're reading a page or two every day? It could be a book about the world, about the dean, and so on and so forth. Uh, another uh, activity could be once a week or more of uh, some sort of volunteering where you can see that you are contributing to the life of the uh, other people around you. You're contributing to uh, the society. You're making a difference in the society. You're doing something beyond your own self. And to make sure that there is enough fun in your life as well. Because sometimes if we cut out all fun, then we may basically end up in a situation that you know we may uh, have a burnt out effect and then we may go all in for fun and we may just like leave all the good we were doing and just go crazy on fun. So finding uh, constructive fun is very important. So a lot of people do destructive funds, you know, such as, you know, partying, going to clubs, drinking, drugs. These are all fun in a sense that they would change the, your mind. They would help you relax for some time, but they have destructive uh, effects. So why not find fun activities that are constructive and that will not destroy your uh, brain, that will not give you that hangover and so on and so forth. So how can you then basically uh, use that is you can use some of the apps that we'll talk about at the end. Uh, on what you can do to manage and monitor your uh, growth in terms of different activities. So now that we have covered that, and we'll go on a step-by-step -step, uh, process of transformation, uh, let me just pause here and then see if you have any questions about the third topic for our webinar, and that were the five pillars of strategic coaching and intervention. Give it a minute. And this is also a good time to stand up and stretch a bit if you like. All right, a few more seconds and we'll continue. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So here's what I would do. So number one uh, thing that people need to realize is that they are capable of changing the situation. That's the key. Uh, obstacle in people actually wanting to change. A lot of people don't change because they think that their life is basically going to go downhill from this point on, or wherever, whenever they stop, you know, uh, progressing. So it's important for them to realize that, look, you are capable of achieving greatness. You're capable of turning around your situation, and that is using several means. Number one is like you now, as a believer, you have the ability to tap into divine assistance and the concept of baraka, the concept of blessings where Allah can magnify your efforts and make things that looked impossible, possible. So the way you achieve those, uh, those divine assistance and those blessings is by making consistent dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that Allah is capable of answering your dua and capable of changing your situation. And doing good deeds that will bring you closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will facilitate the acceptance of your dua. And then avoiding and staying away from bad deeds that are basically uh, an obstacle that uh, draws us back, that prevents us from being successful in what we are trying to achieve. And uh, before we go into the hadith and Quran, we need to also remind them, look, that there have been many people, for example, who have overcome a lot of diseases, have overcome a lot of uh, um, challenges that they had in their life. So having a list of those inspirational stories or finding an inspirational story that kind of relates to the person on how people transform their life while having similar challenge to the person that you're coaching, that can be really powerful as well. So let's take a look at some of the empowerment from Quran and Sunnah. And when you're telling them this, tell them, look, now this is from Quran, which means that Allah has promised this. So Allah is the one, first of all, he is most truthful. Secondly, he is all capable. 
So if I, as a human being, promise to you something, then I may not fulfill it because of two reasons. One, maybe I lied to you or I cheated. I promised something and I thought that you will never be able to you know, fulfill your part of the promise. So I don't have to fulfill my part of the promise. Or the third thing that can happen is I really wanted to fulfill my part of the promise, but because of my limited resources, because of my limit, uh, limitation as a human being, I was not able to fulfill my part of the promise. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, promises something, then he's the most truthful and there's nothing that can prevent him. There's nothing that can stop him from doing what he wants to do. So this is something really, really powerful. And now if you remember what we were talking about earlier in terms of habits, if, if this is something that you find that your convert that you're mentoring or anyone you're mentoring and coaching appreciates, then perhaps he or she should put that reminder on their desktop, on their laptop, on their wallpaper, or make it a reminder that pops up on their phone every day or every week or every other day and so on and so forth. So, and these are things that I'm not just saying, I, I've used it personally, uh, these reminder habits, and I've used it with other people and they have really, really helped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, look, whoever fears Allah, Okay, he, meaning that he keeps his duty to Allah, he keeps the rights of Allah, then Allah will make a way out for him. Now, how Allah will do it, I don't know, but he will find you a way. And if we look at our lives, we have seen this happening for us. And Allah will provide him from ways that he cannot imagine. How many times this has happened, whether it be job, you know, a marriage, um, uh, a health condition, and Allah finds a way, Allah finds a treatment, Allah finds a partner, Allah finds a opportunity that we never thought that we can get it from this way or that way but it just comes in our way okay and look what does it say that allah uh, will be sufficient for someone who truly trusts in allah a true trust is someone who basically knows that allah is the one who is fully in charge and can take care of what the person needs and pro protect the person from what the person uh, can what the, what is harmful for the person and he is making his effort allah will be sufficient for him and then look what it says, and then Allah it will accomplish his purpose. Whatever Allah wants to do will happen, and everything has an appointed term, appointed decree in the for in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the second thing that they need to do, so first thing was they need to realize that it's possible. The second thing that they need to do is raise their standards. So everyone has different standards, right? So for example, if you are hungry, if someone is hungry, there's only a certain type of food that they will eat. There's certain types of food or certain quality of food or certain condition of food that they find disgusting and they, they find gross and they will never ever eat it unless it's, it really becomes uh, a, a life-saving situation. So likewise, we need to have raise our standard in terms of you know, our own habits, our own commitments to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example of that is like some people have you know, pets, okay? And they would take them out at 5 a.m. in the morning for a walk just before they go to work because they know it's their standard that they have to show care for the pet. Okay, sometimes you may be going for fudger and drying for fudger. As you're coming back, you see people like in the dark walking their dogs. So something to think about, right? Uh, some people would just wake up and feed their cats. You know, some people would have that sort of a standard when it comes to customers or business meetings. So everyone has standards. So what are the standards that we have when it comes to the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth? What are the standards that we have in terms of eating healthy and working out and doing some sort of physical activity and, you know, uh, taking care of our brain and our mental health? So what standards do we have? So we have to raise our standards and take ownership of our situation instead of just blaming the situation, blaming the conditions that we were raised in, blaming the environment, blaming the government. So that's the second thing that people need to do in order to change. Now, from a hadith perspective, look at this, and you will see that it kind of relates to the five pillars we talked about. Like, look, first of all, it talks about, look, um, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. So that's, you know, um, the notion of spiritual, you know, tapping into divine assistance, you know, staying away from bad things and doing the good deeds. Okay, so that, that sort of mind frame and being mindful of Allah and you will find it in front of you, right? So what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the creation versus the uh, creator, right? Whose help are you seeking? Whose help are you relying on? Okay, and then your mindset about the people that they cannot harm or benefit you except by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you and then finally if something happens to you if something happens to you so this is remember our third pillar when we talked about what meaning we will give what meaning we will give uh, to painful situations that happen to us and how we will take action 
So this is again very prophetic advice on how we should trust in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, remember what we talked about earlier. If these things are powerful and you find it powerful and the person you're developing coaching is find is powerful, then it should be on their phones as reminders on their desktop, on their wallpaper, on their journal, on their diary, and so on and so forth. And this is another narration. Look, uh, remember, um, for example, it, it talks about victory comes with patience, right? So looking at the future, you know, a painting of a, a, a beautiful fu a future is super important. And hardship comes, oh, sorry, ease follows the hardship and ease follows the hardship. So this is something, again, from a futuristic perspective. So these are all powerful empowerment that we have from Quran and Hadith. And there are many, many other examples of these as well, uh, such as, okay, so that was that. Okay, now it's step number three. Step number C. So step number one was what? Knowing that it's possible and B, taking ownership of it, raising your standards, raising your efforts, raising the quality of time that you want to spend and you know on what things will you spend and what thoughts you will focus on, what thoughts you will uh, and throw away. All these things are part of the standards. Now step three is to set some specific goals in different areas of your relationship. What do you want it to be? You know, paint your future. Paint, uh, uh, write your vision, write your dream, and so on and so forth. So once you have done that, then you are discussing habits that will help you get closer to those goals, okay? Your habits, your rituals will help you get closer and closer to the goals. So once you've decided on those habits, and we have talked about a lot of different habits before and in part two as well, then you can use different things to share your um, scoring with your coach, for example. So they can use uh, an app, amazing app called Habit Share. Right, so they can create some habits in terms of reading activities, you know, dean, uh, studying, applying for jobs, applying for you know marriage, whatever it is that they, their goal is, they can put habits on that and they can share uh, with your with the coach if they like. And if they want something really really holistic, I've seen, shown you some uh, Trello examples before, and something else will come in, in on the next slide as well. Then they can use this holistic system. We don't have really have time to go into this, but it's all recorded. If they if someone wants to really uh, do a holistic change and a holistic planning, uh, they can do something similar to what we have uh, in this document. Unlock yourself, and we have a video about you know uh, making each day count towards your vision and so on and so forth. So as you can see that this is like you know uh, a trailer board for one of the people I was coaching uh, in terms of their daily uh, habits and activities, what they want to do in terms of their relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, their future ideas, and so on and so forth, and what have they been uh, accomplishing uh, during that year. And that's also very important to look and celebrate our successes because that's kind of like you know if you remember we talked about this bullet point earlier, and that was the notion of tapping into and reminding them of their past successes. So once you do that, then they can do daily updates. So as you can see that uh, there are different daily updates about you know, their Quran reading, their observation, the successes, or weekly updates as well. Okay, now, now fifth point is when you have these habits, you need to audit them. And you need to adjust your plan uh, as you learn from your week to week. So as you learn from week to week uh, what you're doing and what's working, what's not working, are you getting close to your goals? Are you missing your habits? So you need to see, okay, why am I missing my habits? And then you would come to realize that, look, maybe I don't have a specific time. I'm doing those habits. Uh, maybe I'm you know, multi-committing. Maybe I have made a too tight schedule. I don't have any buffer to rest. Uh, maybe I need to join a class. Maybe I need to do it with a friend. Whatever, so those things will come in uh, when you're auditing your plan, when you're adjusting your plan for you to be able to achieve more. Okay, so this is the notion, right? So you make a plan, you act on it, and then you check what's going on, you adjust it, and you keep repeating this cycle. So when you're doing the audits of your weekly activities or your weekly progress, think about it. Like, look, what habits did I set? Was I successful or not? If I was not successful, why did I miss it? Is it really important for me to stick to this habit or maybe I can throw it away and replace it with something else? Or is it because, again, as we said, I need to schedule better, uh, I need to do it with a teacher, I need to do it with my friends and so on and so forth, I need to make it exciting for myself. Okay, and then also to review, why is it important for me? Why do I want to be healthy? Why do I want to lose weight? Why do I, why do I want to uh, uh, strengthen my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why is this important? What would happen if I don't change what would happen if i don't make it what have happened if i don't do my habits what are the results of me you know ignoring my habits because that would make it real for you 
what are my obstacles right what are my obstacles why don't i do it is are there ways for me to make it easy for myself such as you know doing it with my friends you know signing up for a class instead of doing it individually and so on and so forth okay so now we will go on to the next stage which is basically the common obstacles that people face as they go on this development uh, journey again i'm going to pause for a minute okay so it's 54 right now i'm going to pause for a minute and that's a time for asking question as well as for you to stretch uh, or do something take take a sip of water so you're fresh and energetic Okay, so let's continue. And uh, so some of the common obstacles that people face uh, when they are going through this journey. So number one is people think, okay, I have to be perfect. So if they make a plan and they, they miss something, so let's say they had a plan for the morning and they missed their fajr, or they missed their, they, they got their fajr, but they didn't get it in the masjid, or they got their fajr, but they did not do the reading they wanted to do after fajr, right? And they'll say, okay, you know what? Forget it, I'm just gonna call it. Uh, I couldn't do it. So let me just waste the whole day. Or I missed one prayer. What's the point of me to take care of my next prayers? Right. So in, in the case of a convert, it's important to remember that look, it's not very likely that you will be able to uh, follow your plan perfectly, and things will happen. So what do you do in a situation when you become imperfect? Another example of that is you know someone may have some sort of a bad habit, whether it be you know related to what that person do or watches or hangs out or drinks or drinks or what have you. So if that happens, does that mean that that's it, you give up or you take care of the rest of the day or you take care of the next day and so on and so forth. So that's something very important to uh, keep an eye on. And that would come in as you are you know, doing your weekly reviews with the person, you will see that, look, they have this pattern that if they don't have a great morning, they basically don't do anything else um, for the rest of the day. So if you help them realize this, hopefully they will realize and they will catch up or you may have to make it easier for them to start their days uh, with something that's easy for them to be successful at and that's why a lot of people would say that you know start your day uh, by fixing your uh, room by making your bed right because that gives you that momentum that look I, I got that first thing done check right and then it gives you that you know easy momentum so another uh, notion of that is the reset is a reset so think about this a lot of people would be like okay i need to have new year resolutions and the way they do it is like okay forget what happened in the last year i'm just going to make it a best be, you know an amazing new year right and people do that because they kind of need that sort of a reset notion and a fresh start but the problem with that is that it's you know it's it's a year after year but really what prevents us from doing it monthly and then if you go further what prevents us from doing it weekly Right, and we have this in Islam. Look, Juma to Juma, the Friday to Friday, how it wipes away our, you know, uh, our sins and our, you know, small sins and so on and so forth. Why don't we do it daily, from Salah to Salah? So let me take care of my, you know, uh, the time between Fajr and Lohar. Let me make it my best. Okay, fine. If you didn't, if you're not able to do it, why not Lohar to Asr? Why not Maghrib to Isha and so on and so forth? Well, if you want to do it even shorter, okay. Look, I messed up in this first hour. Uh, let's say 9 to 10 a.m. but let me have an amazing hour from 10 to 11 a.m. and so on and so forth so you can do it you can shorten your reset cycle so that's another way of overcoming this the next thing is rebound ritual okay now this is something that can come in from a, a spiritual issue or from an emotional issue as well so let's take a look at it spiritual right so what we talked about earlier that look uh, some people may have a habit of let's say drinking may Allah protect us so or, or watching some inappropriate content. Okay, that's relatively easier and very wide, widespread. So they have a habit of watching uh, an inappropriate content on internet, okay? So now what people do is if they watch it, they keep watching it, they get into this uh, habit of, you know, uh, keep watching it, you know, doing cons consistently doing uh, destructive habits and they call it a day. 
okay so that just wastes their entire day if you if they were to realize that look i did a bad thing or i missed my salah i missed my jumar whatever now let me make uh, the best of the rest of the day because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says look good deeds wipe out the bad deeds so let me now engage in dua let me now engage in istighfar let me now engage in reading quran or salah or financial activity like charity or if i don't want to do that let me go and volunteer for some cause and then get back on my plan sometimes it could be like you know you're thinking about some past event oh my god i went through this divorce i lost my parents or you know i lost my job or something and really becomes painful because you keep thinking about it right and it's not easy to stop thinking about it but you need to have a rebound ritual okay whenever this will come in i would you know say this dua I would talk to Allah, I would read Quran, or I would just like, you know, jump into it and take a cold or a hot shower. I would go in a walk in the nature. I would just do like 20 push-ups. So something you do to change your state. And again, you know, from a verbal perspective, how the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that, look, if something happens to you, right? And what do you say? This is what Allah has decreed and Allah does what he wills. So this is a powerful rebound verbal ritual that can have an amazing impact on your mind. So if you see that your person that you're developing or coaching, you know, keeps falling into these uh, traps, help them set a rebound ritual. What will they do if that thought comes to them or if they fall into a bad habit or if they miss a salah and so on and so forth? How will they come out of this and how will they move forward? And then obviously, uh, this is something we talked about earlier. If you're measuring your results, right, you're measuring the change in your environment you're measuring uh, the people's reaction to you versus your own consistent and best efforts, uh, you will not be happy. So make sure you're measuring the right thing that's in your control. And obviously, don't forget to fuel your soul. Just like you want to have amazing food for the body, you want to have amazing food for your mind, you want to, uh, increase, you want to give quality co content to your soul so that it can have a better and better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some suggestions for that, are spending time with books there's a lot of ebooks on kalamullah.com right and that's not to say that you should only be reading ebooks but that can give you a good idea of different books and then you can purchase the book that you like you know using uh, youtube instagram and facebook of, of channels that would give you a uh, good content to develop your soul uh, if you want to connect with quran daily some tips are mentioned in that link there connect with quran so now the question is what is your one key takeaway from today what is the one key takeaway from today and after that we'll basically just take some questions and answers and we'll wrap up the webinar uh inshallah So let me know if you have any questions uh, or what is your key takeaway from today. That's very important to, to think about. Even as people who are watching the recordings, inshallah, think about your key takeaway. And again, as a friendly reminder, when you type your question, make sure that the two field is pointed to organizers and panelists. Okay, so I like the message about empowerment. Nice. Okay, that's good feedback. Okay, so I'll just like show you some of the resources that we have there. And uh, in the meantime, you guys can put in any questions that you have. And uh, other than that, we'll just wrap up the webinar, inshallah. Okay, so some of the things that you can do uh, now basically is to join uh, different WhatsApp groups where we have uh, for different sorts of discussions. So this is a group where we can discuss specific situations and brainstorm ideas and pros and cons. So basically the empowerment ideas depending on the situation. Um, and here's a, a playlist of uh, videos as well as uh, a document that has a lot of content to empower muslims it, it has you know suggestions for courses translations you know um different dealing with different situations emotional um spiritual and so on and so forth and then these are some of the it's a group for any activities any webinars any uh courses any content that's coming up that can be helpful for coaches and this is the content that you know that can be consumed by reverse directly 
Yes. Uh, so could you please send us the WhatsApp links to share with everyone too? Yes. So basically, you should all be getting the slides for all the five webinars if you have registered. If not, then you can send an email uh, at the UKIM address, and they will send you the slides. And obviously, once you have the slides, then you have the links to the WhatsApp as well. So, okay. So in terms of action point, you know, I definitely want to know, like, you know, if we have coaches from different parts of the world, it's a good place to know about who is where, so we can, you know, recommend people. Um, WhatsApp groups, video and content. This is another interesting webinar for uh, your, uh, in terms of developing content, uh, in terms of content about connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, obstacles in that. So that's something I would recommend watching as well. And yeah, so these are the links for the documents I've mentioned earlier. This is uh, some of the headings that we have within the empowerment document. Oh, in terms of books to read, uh, here are some interesting books. It's, it's written by contemporary Islamic scholars. Uh, means for a happy life, enjoy your life, and don't be sad. These are amazing books. Again, so you can find e-copy online. And if you or you, the person you're coaching likes any of those books, they can purchase the hard copy as well. Nice. So the email address you can see on the chat is do at ukim.org uh, to get access to the slides and so on and so forth. Okay, so again, remember my commitments, inshallah, I'll be there to support you. Uh, in this journey, but you have to fulfill your own commitments, inshallah. So final advice, be inspirational. How can you be inspirational if you are setting a good example? So, so a lot of these things that we talked about today, we can all incorporate in our lives and get better in those areas. And as people see this thing in your thought, uh, the converts see that, your family members see that, that would become an inspiration for them to unlock themselves, to have breakthroughs in their own life, and to grow and you know reach their full potential. Okay, this is my contact information um, for you to email or any of the social media content that I'm sharing. So if there are no more questions, then we will, inshallah, uh, close the webinar. But if you have any questions, please go ahead. Any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, please go ahead. All right, then, inshallah, we'll wrap up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, facilitate it for us. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu alayk. Jazakumullahu khairan. Again, thank you very much for UK Islamic Mission for organizing these webinars. And we hope that that will, inshallah, lead into creations of different teams and a lot of different activities, positive activities, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khair again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.